of my clients, when they come in, they come in just in complete crisis, in relational crisis. They um, expose that there is, they're unhappy with their partners. They expose that there's some kind of infidelity. They're on the brink of divorce. All they know is that they're miserable and confused and lost. Um, however, upon hearing their stories more and more, I can pick out the maladaptive patterns that exist. And one of them is often that they lose themselves in the relationship. And one of the number one ways that I find that we lose ourselves in a relationship is we're in, when we're in a relationship where there is a lot of gaslighting. Gaslighting is a form of psychological and or emotional abuse where um, someone consciously or unconsciously gets another person or manipulates another person into believing that their reality is not their reality. In our relationships, gaslighting is much, much more insidious and much more hard to identify. But yet when you really start understanding it, and seeing how it happens in your relationship, every one of my clients has this aha moment that kind of frees them from the crisis, frees them from the um, unhealthy cycle. It's important that you realize that most gaslighters don't even know that they are trying to manipulate you into not believing your reality. Most gaslighting occurs, again, like when I describe those codependent um, versus uh, interdependent relationships. So there's always one person kind of above the other. Another person is kind of set up on a pedestal and has more power in the relationship. That's the type of environment that breeds gaslighting because the person that's on the higher level is highly, highly invested in maintaining power in the relationship for whatever the reason. So they're very highly invested in making sure that they are right, that their reality supersedes your reality, and that you agree with them. The part that is so confusing and crazy making about these, these gaslighting statements are that when they're pervasive and they just keep going, you continue to feel invalidated um, and there is damage that's experienced from being gaslighted, from being invalidated. You start questioning your sanity and, and your intuition and who you are as a person. And when there is this kind of tangible form of abuse, like um, domestic violence, where there's obviously um, someone punching another person or physically harming them, or um, when there's these obvious name calling where yeah. you're screaming cuss words and, and horrible names at somebody. We all understand that to be abusive and, and we can, it's much more tangible to us to go, ooh, this is a very abusive relationship. I gotta get out of this. However, gaslighting does not tend to come with obvious invisible bruises, violence, or abusive statements. I mean, sometimes it can get abusive, but it's very under the radar. When a trusted loved one is constantly dismissing your feelings um, and thoughts and then replacing it with that other person's perception, with that other person's reality, and that other person's interpretation, it can lead one to doubt their sense of self, who they are, where they came from. It's extremely confusing because as I mentioned before, our sense of self or maintaining our sense of self is imperative to maintaining an equally balanced interdependent relationship. Um, to be healthy, we need to know who we are, what we stand for, what our values are, what our non-negotiables are. And when we are constantly being invalidated and told that we're irrational or crazy or overly emotional, we start second guessing ourselves naturally. Um, 
even more so if we have a personality where we really want to please somebody or we really want to show them that we can understand their perspective. And I'm going to talk about that in a second. So that further feeds this idea that maybe we are irrational. Maybe we are over-emotional. And it, it sends us down this downward path of losing our sense of self, not trusting our instincts. And it sets us up for more betrayal, more abuse, and quite frankly, cycles of insanity. If the catalyst for being exposed to gaslighting is that you second guess or invalidate your thoughts and feelings um, in order to be overly empathic for another person, then the antidote to gaslighting is to become very strong and very well grounded in what your thoughts, feelings, non-negotiables, and intuition are. Um, again, take that quiz at the end of the second video and see if you've put yourself in that position, if you're primed for gaslighting. On my website, and I'll link the article below that goes into more detail about gaslighting, I have 13 steps to help you rebuild your intuition, who you are, what you stand for, so that you can better identify and combat being gaslighted, being manipulated, being emotionally abused. Step one is to create a list of your values. These are things that you want to be remembered for, characteristics you want people to use when describing you, their characteristics in yourself and others that are most important to you, and things that you can't live without. So some of those things on the list may be honesty, integrity, um, a hard work ethic, loving people, um, honoring commitments, doing your best, being kind, maintaining some kind of religious or spiritual tradition or belief system, spending time with loved ones, traveling, being generous to those in need, whatever, but you really need to explore what your values are. The second step is you need to create a list of non-negotiables. So these are things in a relationship that you have set a boundary for that are not acceptable. These are things that you will not stand for, such as breaking commitments, emotional or physical abuse, name-calling, uh, shaming comments, comments meant to just shut you down and shame you. If you value monogamy, one of your non-negotiables might be that you're not okay with your partner, you know, having sex or having an emotional relationship with somebody else outside the marriage. A deal breaker might be lying, manipulating, breaking the law, doing drugs, stealing, things like that. You need to remember that these should be standards and values that not only do you hold others to, but you hold yourself to. The third step is I encourage clients to keep a journal or a vlog, whatever, but I want them to go to a place, maybe even just go to therapy, and open-endedly share all their thoughts and feelings um, unrestricted, unworried about what their partners, you know, how they're going to respond, what they're really going to think. But you need a place where you can feel safe to really work on honing your intuition. What is your heart and your mind saying to you? And say it in a safe place, whether, like I said, it's in a journal or a therapist's office or with a pastor or something like that. I want you to explore um, when you're going through this narrative, if there are certain themes, feelings, observations, and experiences that come from this narrative. So um, what is your gut? What's your intuition telling you? Do you find yourself making up the same excuses? Um, do you minimize things? I, just pay attention to those. Step four, I encourage practicing mindfulness. <laughs> now, a lot of people feel like this is kind of like hippie, hocus pocus stuff. 
Um, I personally found that I struggled with being mindful, being still, and actually paying attention to um, what I'm really thinking and what I'm feeling. But as you can imagine, if you're in a relationship where someone is gaslighting you, oftentimes you stop plugging into that. You stop plugging into when they, they tell you, um, hey, you're being so needy, are you on your period? And you don't plug into the fact of how like shaming and gross that makes you feel to hear that and how much it hurts you. Um, you just maybe lock it up and go, oh, okay, I better like pull it together and, and not appear like I'm being too emotional and needy. Um, so practicing mindfulness is just the act. I mean, there's a lot more uh, information you can find on mindfulness, but I generally define it as um, a, just a regular practice of making yourself aware or mindful of what you're thinking and feeling in your body. Um, the ultimate goal is to not judge or like push back against the feeling, um, but to kind of let it pass through you. Um, the goal of doing this practice is I want you to become aware of maybe how much energy you put into pushing back uncomfortable feelings um, and instead letting them wash over you and really help you understand what those feelings are there for, what they're telling you, those thoughts, etc. It's kind of a extension of doing the journaling or speaking freely in a therapy office or with a pastor or someone. I want you to get back in touch with what your instincts and intuition are telling you um, and not coming up with any kind of excuses or rationalization for them. Step five is spending time alone. Um, if you're in a gaslighting relationship, you're in a codependent relationship most often times, um, meaning that you are too dependent on that person to validate you. Um, you're not comfortable with being vulnerable or flawed with them. Um, and so you need that other person to validate you and tell you that you're enough and that you're okay. And so I encourage clients to find some space and, and get some alone time and see, speaking of mindfulness and journaling, see what that feels like. Um, find out things that you like to do on your own. Do you have passions? What would you do if you were on your own? What would that look like? It could kind of help bring to the surface the fact that you, you might have lost yourself and you don't really know who you are set apart from your partnership or maybe let's say your family too and you really struggle with um, who you are and, and what that looks like. Step six is to spend time with some friends and family. This is in the same vein of the keeping the journal, the mindfulness and spending time alone. Um, I want you to be with these other people because sometimes you can get, uh, you know, friendship and love from other friends and family can help mitigate the circumstances so you're not so set up to be abused um, by a gaslighting relationship. Now, you need to make sure that these friends and family aren't also fellow gaslighters. Um, red flags for that would be when you go and talk to, to them about your relationship and they start telling you what you should do um, and what you should feel and you start feeling reluctant to actually share your struggles in your relationship because you don't feel like they're comfortable with just sitting and listening and kind of validating what you're going through and what you're trying to figure out. They um, will invalidate you and instead replace it with um, what they think you need to do. I want you to remember a compassionate loved one is not someone who is less broken than you and can therefore fix you. A compassionate loved one is someone who can sit with you in your pain and discomfort and tolerate it and not try to fix it. Okay. You might want to ask yourself if you're even comfortable with doing that yourself, but it's very important when you're trying to come out of a gaslighting relationship or improve a gaslighting relationship 
that you find others who are comfortable with sitting with you in a compassionate way. Step seven, get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Look, you're allowed to make mistakes. Um, that sometimes includes, but is not limited to, being wrong, unpleasant, disagreeable, and a contrarian, let's say. Someone who disagrees and is angry or upset at someone. We are all flawed and we're imperfect individuals, but we are always worthy of love and belonging. We don't need our gaslighter to become our parent and lecture us or shame us. We need compassion and the space to figure things out and make amends when we falter and do better once we know better. So it goes back to the codependent relationship. I want you to watch um, video two and um, that elaborates on this subject a lot more. Step eight, speaking of getting comfortable with being uncomfortable, I encourage clients to complete a step four. That is the step four in the 12 steps from AA. Um, that is to make a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. So start building a full picture of yourself. Again, this is part of rebuilding your intuition and who you are and what you want to stand for. You need to understand the not so pretty parts of you too. Um, you need to know what is your good, your bad, your strengths, your weaknesses, your positives, your negatives. The point of this brutal process is to kind of clear out our dirty laundry, to realize where we have shame and to no longer be controlled by hiding that shame. I'm going to link below uh, my article on fear and shame and guilt um, and basically Brene Brown's research. That's going to elaborate on this whole subject matter. Step nine is to complete a step nine, <laughs> nine of the 12. Because um, step nine of the 12 is about making amends to others or yourself where you have harmed. So when you complete a step four, you're identif identifying where you're imperfect and how you've fallen short. Step nine is about holding yourself accountable and making amends for those shortcomings making amends for the harm you may have caused in a step towards liking yourself. So making amends for the harm that you've caused. So identifying the way that you have these strengths and these weaknesses, but then owning these weaknesses. Um, it's a part of liking yourself again. It's So it's a two-part recovery where you figure out who you are um, and then liking that person. And this is where we're getting into that part. I have these non-negotiables. I have these boundaries. I have the, these values. And yeah, I've fallen short in executing those myself. Um, that doesn't mean that I deserve, you know, abuse or harm. Um, I can still be flawed and worthy of love and belonging and, and not have someone gaslight me or emotionally abuse me or manipulate or lie or whatever. Um, so a step nine is part of that, kind of owning I'm flawed, this is how I'm flawed. This is a really important one, step 10. Stop defending yourself. Stop defending what you know to be your truth. It's you, it can be as simple as your partner said something that really hurt your feelings and you're upset about it and you're finding that you're resentful or angry or whatever and you tell them, hey, you really hurt me when you did this. And they want to snap back and say, you're being unreasonable, you're irrational, you're ridiculous, you're sensitive, you're on your period, all these reasons why your feelings are invalidated. Do not defend yourself. You know what your truth is, you stand on it. And you really have to kind of learn some sound bites during these arguments where you don't have to take on the gaslighter's truth. Uh, you can just say, look, that's your opinion and I just don't see it that way. We're going to have to agree to disagree. Um, or look, like 
this is just how I feel. I'm sorry. You don't have to seek out their approval and they need to lose their investment in always being right. And then the gaslighting cycle can't exist anymore. You should not ever have to hustle for your worthiness or your validation. Step 11, do not confuse being empathetic to someone for gaslighting. So again, another person's, you can understand another person's perspective. You can appreciate where they're coming from without giving up your truth. You can agree to disagree. You can take their feedback into consideration. Just because you understand what they're saying and what they're experiencing does not mean you have to take on that experience for your own. Step 12. Never ever invalidate your experience or feelings. Um, after all these steps, you should know um, who you are, what you stand for, what you're feeling, what's important to you, and what your intuition's telling you. You should never have to invalidate your experience or feelings to be in a relationship with someone else. Your loved one should be allowed to experience whatever he or she experiences. That never discounts or negates or invalidates your own feelings, thoughts, or experiences. I can't say that enough. And that's a really hard thing for people to do in relationships. Last step, step 13. Hold others to this same standard that you've set forth in these previous 12 steps. So completing all these steps are extremely difficult, but they can lead to a new, healthier relationship, uh, a greater sense of self-worth, a greater sense of uh, understanding who you are. Um, I also want you, I'll link my healthy boundary sheet because it's oh so important for everyday use for people to do healthy boundaries, to act out healthy boundaries, and then to expect healthy boundaries in return from others. This is a practice. It's something that is not going to happen gracefully and wonderfully. You're not going to start acting out these 12 steps and your relationship that's in major crisis is suddenly going to dissipate and, and everything's going to make sense again. That's not how it happens. But whether or not you're going to remain in this relationship, you have got to stop this pattern. And I really hope that this video helped you understand what gaslighting is, um, what it looks like, how it exists in your relationship, but also empowers you to know the ways that you can stop it. You don't have to receive the gaslighting, manipulation, emotional abuse, etc. So with that said, thank you for your time. Um, please leave me any kind of feedback or you can subscribe so I, um, you'll get new videos that I create. Um, I'll be doing other videos on more videos on infidelity, betrayal blindness, betrayal trauma, subject matter of that kind. If you have any suggestions on other subjects, please let me know. Thank you.